Pastor, this is our second year and 15th year overall. We appreciate the opportunity we have to serve you and to be a part of God's wonderful and great kingdom. Some 30 years ago, I went to Pisgah and Oak Hill, and uh, we had a fellow there that came from Kansas that went to Pisgah, and Along the way, they started to give out to see who could give the ugliest tie out. And over a seven year period of time, I accumulated several different ties. And on the last Sunday that I was there, uh, he showed up with this tie. He had already given me one like it to let me know that he was the one that was giving me those ties. And so this morning, I thought as I started another year with you, I would wear the tie that he gave me. Uh, he's up in age now, but he still lives over there around Pisgah. I see him from time to time. And, uh, but it's amazing, the people that you meet in 30-something years of ministry, but what a great and wonderful opportunity it is to serve God's people and especially to be with this congregation as we continue to work together, as we continue to do the Lord's business. I ask you just to continue to be faithful and continue to reach out to make a difference in the lives of people throughout this community. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We're glad to have each and every one of you here this morning as we worship the Lord together, as we lift up the name of Jesus Christ, that name that's above all names. For at his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. We gather together to worship as God's wonderful people. We gather together to fellowship one with another as we lift up one another. Hymn number 98, To God Be the Glory. Thank you. 
time you all have the box full, well, look, it's coming down the coming down the side. I got it heavy this morning. How have y'all been doing? You enjoyed the end of Bible school and everything? It's been really hot, hasn't it? It's been almost as hot as a furnace. That's what we're going to talk about today. You know what a furnace is? It's like an oven, kind of like a little stove. Um, we're going to talk about three guys. And we actually talked about them at Bible school last year. I don't know if y'all remember Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego. You remember them? We're going to go over them again. Um, this morning, because it's been a little while, and it's a, it's a pretty good story. So, there were these three guys that I just mentioned, and they came before uh, Nebuchadnezzar, which was the king. And um, do you know, do you remember what he wanted them to do? Yes, that's right. See, y'all were paying attention. Uh, he had idols and other gods that he was worshiping, and as you know, um, since we only have one God, you know, He doesn't want us to worship other things. There is only one God. So, um, Nebuchadnezzar wanted these three guys to worship his idols. And uh, anybody that didn't, he was throwing into the fire. Uh, so he told them that's what he was going to do with them if they didn't kind of cooperate with him. And uh, they said that they would only worship their God. And uh, so he threw them in. He had them tied up and thrown in. Well, when he looked in there, they weren't tied up anymore, and there were four people in there. So when he opened the door, he realized that uh, nothing had happened to them. They weren't burnt or anything. And uh, it completely, you know, shocked him and changed his mind about what was going on. And, uh, he was asking them who their God was and uh, was was wanting to know about him. And so what, I, what I'm trying to get at is uh, two things. They showed an incredible amount of faith in God, and he protected them. He looked out for them. And so any situation that we're in, as long as we show our faith in God, uh, um, He'll look out for us. And another thing is, if we show how strong our faith is, people around us will notice. And uh, they'll want to know more about our religion and our faith. So it's always important to have a strong show of faith. Let's have a prayer this morning. Heavenly Father, thank you for these children. Thank you for this day. Um, just please go with us throughout this week. and. Thank you for letting them have an enjoyable BBS. And hope we have many more to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This morning as we go to the Lord in prayer, we want to continue to remember those that are sick and those that are shut in, those that are going through treatments. We ask the Lord to continue to be with each and every one of them. Uh, Nancy Butler is uh, recovering uh, at Patewood uh, Rehab and Help Center just off of Congaree Road. She's in room 103. Uh, she's supposed to see the doctor on July the 11th, and she's hoping that he will let her go home uh, with her shoulder. Uh, her neck seems to be okay where she fell in the nursing home and, and fractured a couple of the vertebrae. Uh, it, the neck seems to be okay. And so we give the Lord the praise and ask the Lord to continue to be with Nancy as he restores her to her health. Uh, we want to remember uh, Joyce Robertson who had uh, a tumor removed and her daughter who was in an accident the day before. And so we lift up those and we ask the Lord to be with each and every one of these and uh, to walk with them in a mighty way in the journey ahead. And Fran well, we got a praise report. Francis is doing well, 90-something years old and been in the hospital and, and with congested heart failure and has made a remarkably comeback. And so uh, we give the Lord the praise. We're, we're thankful. Let us pray. 
Heavenly Father, as we come before your throne of grace in the coolness of a morning that you have sent clouds our way, and Lord, we don't give you thanks now for the rain that you are going to send our way. Heavenly Father, there are many that are upon our hearts. There are those that are in need of your touch. Heavenly Father, there are those that are been through surgery and those that are facing certain situations in life. Lord, there are those that are bereaved. Lord, there are people hurting from all walks of life. Lord, we just ask for your touch to be upon each and every one of these situations. We ask that you might encircle each and every one of these with your loving arms and hold them close and bless them mildly as you walk with them day by day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for each and every one of these precious lives that have gathered here today. Heavenly Father, you know each and every one of our hearts and you know what each and every one of us are going through. For Heavenly Father, every family is touched in some way or another. Every family is in need of your touch. Heavenly Father, we ask that you might just be with each and every one of us, that you might touch us and heal each and every situation. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, for in him we find that hope for each day. In him we find life, and we find it so abundantly. In him we find that assurance of eternal life. Heavenly Father, thank you for the hope and for that assurance that you give unto each and every one of us. Heavenly Father, we pray for your precious Holy Spirit, that your Holy Spirit might guide and direct us in all the ways that you would have us to go, that your will might be done in each and every one of our lives as we are drawn closer to you and closer to one another. Heavenly Father, may we love one another and care for one another as you have loved us and cared for us. Heavenly Father, may we make a difference in the lives of people throughout this community. Heavenly Father, continue to walk with each and every one of these that are gathered here today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the prayer that Jesus prayed on many occasions. He told his disciples to pray, and we pray this morning as your children, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hymn number 400, Come thy fount of every blessing.
Our Psalter reading is found on page 774. We're reading from Psalm 40 today. I waited patiently for the Lord who inclined to me and heard my cry. The Lord drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. The Lord put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. And many will see and be in awe, and their trust is in the Lord. Blessed are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray at false gods. O Lord my God, you have multiplied your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than they can be numbered. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burn offering and sin offering you have not required. Yet I said, Lo, I have come, and the roll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O oh my God, your law is within my heart. I have told the glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. Lo, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hid your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and faithfulness from the great congregation. O oh Lord, do not withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and faithfulness ever preserve me. announcement we announced last Sunday that we had bought two new refrigerators for down in the fellowship hall uh, $1,168 for the two Marion did a good job of uh, getting the two refrigerators for us uh, last Sunday I understand we took up $320 towards those refrigerators um, Today we give you the opportunity if you would like to give to help pay for them. We appreciate it that we might uh, be able to put that money back into the fund in case we need something uh, down the road and uh, we would have the money there to be able to do it. I uh, appreciate all that you have done and continue to do as we continue to be about the Lord's business. And then, um, I have a, uh, on Marlene's Facebook site, uh, we have put Mixon's Farm blueberries on there. And hopefully uh, that you will go to that page and you will click the like on it and you will share it with the people around about uh, so that they know where we are. And for every gallon of blueberry that is sold by UPIC, I will give a dollar of that gallon to no malaria. And so the more uh, gallons they pick, the more that we will give to no malaria. I appreciate your help and I appreciate all we do is we work together for God's kingdom to make a difference in the lives of people everywhere. Are there any other announcements that we need to make today? May we worship the Lord with our tithes and offerings. Thank you. 
Father, we truly thank you for these gifts and those that have given them. Heavenly Father, we ask that they might be used for the uplifting of your kingdom, that Jesus Christ might be Lord of all. In his name we pray. Amen. book of Galatians, the fifth chapter, verse 1, and then beginning with verse 13 through 18. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourself be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. You, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather serve one another in love, for the entire law is summed up in a single commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desire of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature, for they are in conflict with each other. So what you do not do, what you won't. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for this scripture and for the message that you have given unto me this morning. 
as I break the bread of life to your wonderful people. Heavenly Father, may every word that flow from my lips be pleasing unto you. And Heavenly Father, these your precious children who have come today to hear that bread of life. Heavenly Father, may their hearts and meditation thereof be pleasing unto you. For it is in Jesus' wonderful and precious name we pray. Amen. Our subject today is what does it mean to be really free? In a week, we will celebrate July the 4th. Over 25% of the people in the United States do not know why we celebrate July the 4th. They do not know that it's Independence Day. They do not know the country that we were set free from. Apostle Paul knew what freedom was all about. Even though he had been in prison, he'd been shipwrecked, he'd been whipped, he was even faced in death. But Apostle Paul understood what it was to be free. What does it really mean to be free? Just because we live in a free country does not make us free. We have seen over the last 15 years, and especially the last seven or eight years, our freedom continue to be taken away from us. But not only here in the United States, but throughout the whole world. We see what's happening there in Great Britain because the people are looking for freedom. But freedom does not necessarily come from our country. And sometimes as teenagers, when we think, well, when I reach 21 years of age, I'm going to be free. But folks, us folks that's been down that road know that just because you reach 21 years of age, you're not free. It's simply that we exchange one set of shackles for another. And so this morning, what does it really mean to be free? John Maxwell says that for Apostle Paul, freedom meant that he had nothing to hide, he had nothing to lose, and he had nothing to fear. Think about that for a moment. If you really want to be free in this world in which we live, you have nothing to hide, you have nothing to lose, you have nothing to fear. Apostle Paul had nothing to hide. On Damascus Road, he came face to face with the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Lord Jesus Christ became Lord of his life. And Apostle Paul confessed his sin. And Jesus Christ forgave him of his sin. Apostle Paul knew that he had many sins, that he had stood and watched Stephen being stoned to death and he did nothing about it. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He searched out Christians and he persecuted them. He went and he brought the Christians back to Jerusalem to face trial. Apostle Paul had done many things that was against God's law. Apostle Paul, when he came face to face with Jesus Christ and confessed his sins, Jesus Christ forgave him never to remember him again. Folks, we have nothing to hide. 
For when we confess our sins to Jesus Christ, he forgives us our sins, never to remember them again. It's over with. It's through. Now, we may struggle a long time with something that we have hidden in our hearts that we have done against somebody or that we have done that we knew was wrong. But that moment that we ask the Lord to forgive us, he forgives us and he never remembers it again. He will never take it up again. Apostle Paul knew that he had nothing to hide. When he came back to Jerusalem and the people rejected him because they knew of his past sin, Apostle Paul had nothing to hide. And he won them over because he had pledged his allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he knew that his sins had been forgiven and he knew he had nothing to hide. Apostle Paul had nothing to lose. Apostle Paul could have been a wealthy person. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He came from a fine stock of family. But Apostle Paul was willing to give up everything that he had to follow Jesus Christ and to do the will of the Father. Even though he had been shipwrecked, beaten, imprisoned, and facing death, Apostle Paul still knew he had nothing to lose. He was willing to give it all up. And folks, we struggle sometimes with what we are going to lose. As we get older, we're afraid that we don't lose those looks that we used to have. We don't put on a few more pounds than what we had at early age. And so we're afraid what folks might say about us. We're afraid that we might lose our job or, or we might lose what money we have or or there are so many different things that we feel like that we might lose. We might lose our Medicare. We might lose our Social Security. But if we are going to be totally and really free, we have nothing to lose. The story is told of a 12-year-old boy whose father was a, an industrious, worked seven days a week, was wealthy. He gave his f son a quarter to do the yard work. And so the elder brother got his younger brother, who was six years old, to do the yard work. And he says, now I'm going to give you this quarter, but at supper time you don't have to give me this quarter back. And so the young boy agreed with his brother to do the work. And so he, he went out and he did the work. He did all the yard work. And the boy, the older brother, gave the boy, his brother, a, the quarter to hold until supper time. And when the father came in that afternoon, he noticed the little boy having the quarter he said, son, where did you get that quarter? He said, well, no, elder brother told me that if I would do the yard work, he would let me hold a quarter under supper time, and then I would have him give it back. And he said, what do you mean that your brother gave you a quarter to do the work, but he's going to take it back at supper time? He said, well, father, that's what you do all the time. And that's what's going to happen. And folks, there's so much truth to that. Because nothing that you and I have, it doesn't matter how much we have, there's nothing that we have that is permanent. 
No matter what land we have or house we have or cars we have or money in the bank, it doesn't matter. When the Lord calls us, we not don't take one iota with us. We don't leave every bit behind. And so if we want to truly be free, then we ought not worry about what we are to lose. When we love the Lord Jesus Christ and we're willing to do his will, folks, we have nothing to lose. And we have nothing to fear. Apostle Paul, even as he sat in the prison, and knowing that death was at hand, Apostle Paul said to love the Lord, to die for the Lord is to gain. To die for the Lord is gain. Apostle Paul was willing to pledge his allegiance to the Lord Jesus Christ, and he did not fear what was going to happen to him. To die was the game. Golfer Tom Lemmerman was facing a dilemma with precancer condition and was facing surgery. He said he and his wife claimed Joshua 1.9. And that Joshua 1.9 got them through, and I believe that this has maybe been the scripture with the Vacation Bible School. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wherever thou goest. Folks, you have nothing to fear. Wherever you go, whatever you go through, whatever struggle you're facing, the Lord will go with you. Wherever you go, the Lord is there. John McCain, senator, tells about his time in prison in North Vietnam as a prisoner of war. One of his fellows with him was a commander, Michael Christian. Michael Christian put together some cloth, a white cloth and a red cloth, and he sewed it together and sewed it inside of his blue top of his pajamas. And every night they would hang that blue pajamas up and they would pledge allegiance to the United States of America. And one day the guard caught them pledging allegiance to the United States. And they took Michael Christian out and they beat him terribly. And so when he came back that night and they put him in his cell, he started gathering up white cloth and red cloth and sewing it back again. Because he was so devoted and so dedicated to the United States. What are you going to do with a person like that? There's not a thing you can do when you're that dedicated. And that's the way Apostle Paul was when he dedicated his life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It didn't matter what they did to him. He was on stand fast with the Lord Jesus Christ. Folks, this morning, if you want to really be free, know that whatever sin that is in your life, If you will confess your sin to God, Jesus Christ will forgive you and never remember it again. And you have nothing to lose because when we leave this world, we're not going to take anything with us. And you have nothing to fear 
because folks, no matter what we go through, the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be there with us. Wherever we go, he will be there. And so, in order for us to totally be free, we have nothing to hide, nothing to lose, and nothing to fear. Hymn number 389, Freely, Freely. Heavenly Father, these are your precious children. Heavenly Father, help them to experience total freedom today. Freedom from this world, knowing that you will be with us always, no matter what we go through. Lord, just continue to bless each and every one of these as you hold them close. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>